recording. Hey everybody, welcome. This is um, Monday, May 22nd, 2017. Thanks for joining me. I'm Diana Crawford. I'm also known as Power Selling Mom. You can find out more, just visit my website, powersellingmom.com. So enough about me. I'm not going to bore you. This presentation is, I wanted to share, I get so many questions about how to research. And everyone that's ever been to any of my um, presentations, I just stress the fact how important research is before you list. And this, this is what helps us decide what's worth listing, what's not worth listing, and so forth. And I know when I first discovered WorthPoint, I was over the moon because um, everybody that knows me knows how I use therapy. But WorthPoint helped me to identify so many items that people brought to me. I'm a consignment seller, and I could not believe how easy it was for me to identify these items and then narrow it down to um, not only identify them, but to give a price on how to um, price my listing. So if you go to my webpage, um, Power Selling Mom, you can just go to the little search bar at the right, and whatever topic you're interested in, you can type in what you're looking for. So if you just type in Worth Point and click search, and then you'll find any articles that I have on the topic of Worth Point. So, oh, I forgot to shut off my phone. Crap. Where is it? <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, future reference, shut off your phone before you turn on the webinar. <laughs> All right, so if you, if you go to this page and then you search for um, WorthPoint, you'll be able to read an article that I have up about WorthPoint, how I use it, and a lot of information there. So for those of you that want further reading, I'll also include a direct link in my email, my follow-up email. So. Let me tell you, um, let's just go right to WorthPoint. I don't have a formal presentation, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to type them in, and I will answer them as we go along, and I'll do my best to um, answer your questions. So at the end of this presentation, everybody's going to receive a coupon code so that um, you will definitely get a free trial with WorthPoint, and then... Um, a discount code if you want to continue on and then with a discount. So meanwhile, just to give you an example, the latest thing that I listed on eBay that this is my eBay store that WorthPoint helped me identify or price was um, it was a mold. So I had a, a lovely lady, one of my clients, bring me some molds to list for her on eBay. So these are the, the molds that she brought me. There were three chocolate molds and then um, these, the, the bunny and the lamb are classics that people use for cake or bread. My grandmother used to always use the bunny, or excuse me, the lamb mold for bread at our um, Easter and holidays, she would put baked bread in them. So anyhow, I had the task of trying to price these on eBay. So everybody pretty much knows that when you're at eBay, let's see, we'll open a, a new page here. When you're on eBay, open a new tab. You would go to the search bar, and so let's, this is a chicken mold. So I would put in um, chicken, I'm sorry, it was a turkey, turkey chocolate mold. And we'll just start doing our first search. So this is where you would start getting an idea. Now, there's a sort bar at the top right, and you can tell I've been shopping on eBay, so I have mine adjusted to the lowest price first. So now I'm going to adjust it to the highest price first. And I will start taking a look. Um, yes, Judith, you will receive a recorded copy of this webinar and the coupon code for discounts. Not a problem. Whatever email you used at sign up. You're welcome. 
<laughs> All right, so now I'm going to take a look. Well, there I am at the top. How about that? Mine is the yellow one. <laughs> I used yellow background that day. And so the first thing I noticed before I listed this, though, mine wasn't the highest price. So here was one for $275. So listing items on eBay, we have to be very strategic. And sometimes it's challenging. It's like, I don't know how to price this. I don't know the value of it. I know I want to make the most amount of money for it. And especially when I'm selling on consignment, because I only get half the money for it. So I want to be able to um, see where how I'm going to increase my odds to make the most amount of money. So eBay is limited. I can only research so far up, so or so far back. So now I'm already at the $15 mark and they're lollipop chocolate molds. So these are not the type of molds that I have. These, the one that I have is an antique. And I'm pulling up all types, but I want to start my search that way. And now we can see there's smaller ones. So the highest price one really on eBay, here's one for 150 that's close, 150 And then there's the large chocolate mold that makes a bunch of them for $3.99. So now I'm going to go ahead and switch it up off to the left. I'm going to click on sold listing, or excuse me, let's do completed first. And by checking out completed, there are 74 results with these words, turkey chocolate mold. Now, why this has tur turkey chocolate mold on that, I don't know. I, don't, I have no clue. All right, so this one, now, if it's in black, it means it did not sell. And if it's in green, it's sold. Here we go. Here's one sold for... $222, and it's a large one, four-inch, nice look. Okay, what a waste of words. Nice look, that's crazy. <laughs> Sorry, you should not use words like that. They may have sold that for more money had they had better words in there. All right, so now let's scroll down. Here's one. This one sold for 140 Now, just looking at these, again, it's limited as far as how many are on there. So... I can only see um, a couple that may be comparable to mine, and these didn't sell. This person tried it again. They keep relisting it and relisting it. It's not working out for them. They keep relisting it. Now, here's one that only sold for $64.88, and it was auctioned. So just by this quick research, the first instinct that I'm learning is auction is not the way to go with this kind of item because the ones that we're doing on auction, they actually sold pretty cheap. And then the people that were, see here's one for $45.99 with only six bids, and that should have went for a lot more. So also they had ice cream mold on there. Never thought of that word. Never thought of that. All right, so this is why I love researching completed, because I want to learn from both the sold and the unsold. I don't want to just look at sold only, because I want to see what, what was wrong with the ones that didn't sell so that I don't do what they did. And so we're going to kind of look at all these. Here's some more words, hinged. There's words hinge on that one. And theirs actually has a name, the Van Emden Turkey. All right, and my turkey doesn't have a name. All right, so going to the top, looks like 140. Again, that was a buy it now. They were asking 175, and they accepted an offer of 140. And then this one was 220. So let me go back to mine, um, my turkey. I have mine at 285. So here's how I came up with this price. Before I listed it, I went right to worth point and I put in turkey turkey chocolate mold and hit search. And now again, because those people had those words in there, they are showing up. But I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. Now here we go. Now we're talking some money. 
This one sold for uh, $416, and that was in October of 2015. Next, we can look through. Now, I actually, excuse me, the same thing on WorthPoint, I can adjust my search to best match, highest to lowest, so I always keep my settings from highest to lowest. And then you can also have up to 100 items on one page. So I like to start at the top. I always like to show me the money. Let's see where I can make the most amount of money. But right now we're kind of educating ourselves because we couldn't find this kind of information on eBay. So this is why WorthPoint helps me so much on going forward with making that final decision on how to list my item. Now there's one very comparable to mine. This one, um, no. Mine's, this one's actually bigger than mine. And they sold it for 207 So let's see why they're sold for so little. Now it's going to show me um, large turkey, pewter, tin mold, excellent, 11 by 9. That's pretty big. Um, you can go to, oh, Martha Stewart. This is actually one that I was reading about, I remember, because it did look a lot like mine. And I actually did what they said. They said, Google Martha Stewart and chocolate turkey mold and see her YouTube video making a turkey. Well, I thought, gosh, that's really great. I could actually go do that and then um, take insert her video into my my listing. So I actually did that. I went and did a Google search for Martha Stewart chocolate turkey mold and I watched her video. It was actually on her website. And guess what? Half Good thing I watched it and I didn't just say, oh yeah, this is a great idea and insert it. So learn from this. Always make sure you watch a video thoroughly before you put it in your listing because halfway through her video she made a comment about um, making sure, like using um, molds, newer molds, I don't know, she made some comment about to look for any flaws or whatever, but she made a comment that I thought would maybe affect people from not buying my mold, so I did not insert her video, but it was interesting. I really had no idea how people made chocolate with these things. Now, the other thing I learned from this was um, I don't recommend having all caps in your title, but they did have all caps. Now, the only thing I don't know is if they did an auction or a buy it now, but it, the bottom line is it sold for 207 So taking that information and then looking up here at this one that sold for, where was it? This one sold for 416 I can go in and let me pay attention to what kind of words did they use in their title. This isn't the exact same turkey as mine, but I want to learn from what kind of um, words they used in their title, what kind of words did they have in their description. And if I wanted to, I could actually copy their words and I could paste them and then read. Um, look, at they, they have a lot of information. Well, they're, they've got too much information. Oh, my God. They got way too much. Oh, they even have their phone number and address. <laughs> that is a no-no. Don't do that. But the thing is, by saying, okay, they went, they sold theirs for 416 Of course, that one's a little bit larger. So taking that information and then the information from the current ones that sold on eBay, the highest was 222 that was comparable to mine. And then taking all of that information, then I decided to list mine a little higher than normal. So I listed mine at 285. And that's how I came up with the idea. So it was kind of strategic. And then you can also click on make an offer. And I have my offer, I can't remember now. I think I have it set uh, not to accept, auto accept. Um, at whatever price I have, but I have that all set up ahead of time. And then I tried to remember what kind of words. Um, I like short, sweet, left margin. Anybody who's ever been to any of my workshops knows that's how I, I, I list things. 18, number 18 font. 
and then just a few short sentences and then hit the enter key and I don't like listings that go on and on forever where people think they need an attorney before they buy so you don't want too much information but you do want to try to have 12 photos always there you, there's no reason why you can't get 12 photos in there of all of your items and I know I was like what else do I take pictures of but <laughs> You just keep taking pictures, and then if you run out of ideas, then just change your background color. I wanted mine to stand out a little bit, so I used yellow on this one. So I have only had 25 page views, but it's getting there. And then don't forget that you can um, share this. I just listed this a couple days ago. All right. Now, I hope you can see how much this helped me by taking a look. The other thing that really helped me was the first listing that I did out of, um, where are they? No, sorry. Of these items that I listed, the first one that helped me was this rabbit. This rabbit was the first item I listed from this batch on May 12th. And I had no idea how to price this. So this was a Griswold rabbit mold. So let's just copy that. And this time we'll go put this in search on eBay first. And next we'll see, okay, Santa. It doesn't tell us what they accepted. Santa and then um, a mix of them sold for 380 now here's a rabbit mold that sold for less at they were asking 250 I don't know what they sold it for 224 and then down to 199 so those didn't sell no sale 179 now let's go to worth point and this time we'll put in the rabbit Griswold All right, so we can see this first batch with the Santa, the rabbit, the lamb, the, the mix of them sold for $899 in 2012. And over here, $500 in 2017. So those sold for $500. That was in January. But when we go back and look at eBay, it shows that the April it goes back to April 7th sold for 380 so I'm sure by now you can realize that if I was only searching this on eBay and I was um, thinking well 380 looks like high price I may list my my three items for that and not think any more of it but when I look at worth point I can see 500 it sold for in January 2017 so because of having um, the ability to search on WorthPoint, I can learn that I don't want to settle for 380 like this person did in April. So I could maybe price mine a little bit more in between 500 and 380 or maybe started at 499.99 with make an offer. <clears throat> Excuse me, if I had those three items. So I'm sure you can start to see how the benefit is for this strategic type of listing items on eBay. So for me, <clears throat> excuse me, when I was looking up this rabbit, so here's one sold for $330, $299, and then on eBay, it say between $250 and say $225 was the average. And that was a buy it now. So, based on the research between the two, I came up with the idea to list mine at 330 and then with make an offer. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I see we have questions coming in. Is the worth point info from only eBay listings or other sources as well? Good question, Barbara. Um, the worth point is from all sources. So if there was um, something at Sotheby's or some other auction house, I forget which all, um, you're welcome, I forget which all sources they pull in, but they do pull in from other resources out there besides eBay. 
So just going through this, now I know you're all going to be watching for die cast bunny molds, right? <laughs> oh, and there's a, a guy that even had his picture in there. So he had his picture <laughs> holding holding the bunny and make his listing a little more interesting. But again, he sold his for $225. And he may have been able to sell that for more. So in my opinion, I call that take it out for a spin, get it listed, and then list it high with make an offer. I've actually got three watchers. So what I usually do is I'll wait, you know, if there's no action in 30 days, then I'll drop it by a couple bucks and then see what happens and then kind of play it by ear and then, you know, reevaluate. But those that know me know I hate inventory. I try to sell my items at least in six months. Um, higher end items I may sit on for a year if they're not taking up a lot of space. <clears throat> Excuse me. But generally, you know, six months is my limit. All right. So going back, that's how I made this decision to price all of these items. Now, this big one is this antique, um, this bunny. This one's really cool, and this one's big, so it's 14 inches tall. Now, I learned that there are different versions of this bunny. So just by doing my research, I took, um, let's say, see, I also wanted to have the word bunny and the word rabbit in my title, and also the word basket, because I noticed some people were um, buying more bunnies that had baskets versus no baskets. So I thought that would be an important word as well. All right, so if we take rabbit chocolate mold, we're going to get a lot of these because there's a lot of candy molds out there. But we do have this set already. Here we go. Look at that bunny. $1,525. Oh my goodness, right? <laughs> I wish I had a truckload. Now, the first thing I noticed is this person did have an auction. So let's go in and take a look at what they had. They had 48 bids. And boom, 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 boom. They started it at $9.99. And they rolled the dice. So I would, I would be... I would not be afraid to do this if I had this bunny, but my bunny is not like this one. This bunny is where I learned about, let me pull it up. This is where I learned about the, the difference in the bunnies. So this one is more of like the classic, it made um, like Beatrice bunny style. This bunny has an apron, so the bunnies with aprons were selling for higher. And look how big that is. That is a big chocolate mold. And they got great pictures. It's in good condition, blah, blah, blah. All right, so, but this gave me an idea, <clears throat> excuse me, this gave me an idea that, okay, these things really sell, but how can I make the most for my bunny? The next one was $9.96. Again, it was an auction. Now here we had a buy it now for $9.95. It didn't work out. They didn't sell it. But their bunny really wasn't the big one with the apron. Their bunny even looks a little short to me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now here's another bunny that is interesting. It's on its um, back hind legs are up higher. Where is it? Here we go. And so you'll notice that this one has two paws out front, and it's a little more detailed bunny. It's like a dancing bunny. looks like Prancer, the Prancer bunny. And that's it, doggone it. That's all the pictures they had. Now, this one sold for $8.99.95, and they started theirs at $150 auction. So that was good. They did pretty good. All right, so now learning these, these things about bunnies, I'm noticing that my bunny is looking different compared to any of these types. My bunny is also a tall, big bunny, but it 
didn't have a cane. This one has a cane, actually, and this one has a baby on its back, a baby bunny on its back. So there were so many things that were different about the different bunnies. So this is what I learned. Now here's one they were asking 329 and didn't get it and so on. So again, none of these bunnies are looking like mine. So I go to the top and I'm going to pay attention to what was really selling well and they still sold. Next, let's go check out um, let's go check out the same words, rabbit chocolate mold at Worth Point. All right. Look at that. $5,500. Oh my goodness, right? <laughs> That's called um, 34 inch. That's a master giant rabbit. <laughs> that would be a nice uh, feast for Easter. And then you'll see the next one's 5,000. Now these have names. This is H. Walter. So there, there's a brand on that one. And then here's an antique mold rabbit, um, 3,000. Then we'll scroll down, 2,900, 2,008. 2005, 2004, and again, the closest one, these are all looking close to mine, but not yet the same bunny as mine, but I was really able to see that the bigger molds with the bunny standing up were selling for more. Now here's 911. This was 2016 and 2014. Six hundred and sixty-six. This one looks kind of like mine. That one was six fifty. So, anyways, this is how you can narrow it down to come up with a strategic plan on how to list your item when it's hard to figure out. Look at this person had a pizza box in there. <laughs> That's an interesting thing. Um, all right, so getting back to my bunny, I came up with $1,200. Mine is 14 inch and I couldn't find one like mine. So mine has this um, clamp that goes around it to keep it in place. And it's what I liked about mine was it had really beautiful eyes, I thought. I know when I was a kid, I always liked to eat the eyes first. I was weird. I wouldn't eat the ears first. I would eat the, the eyes. <laughs> but the eyes usually only always had like a, a piece of candy in them. What did you eat first? Go ahead and answer that. You can type in your question <laughs> on your chocolate bunnies. What did you eat first? The ears, the eyes, the butt? All right. <laughs> oh, Cynthia ate the ears. All right. <laughs> That's generally what people would like. <laughs> yep. The majority is the ears. All right. So. Hey, Betty, I just saw your hand up. Sorry. All right. Um, all right. Now, <laughs> Betty ate her brother's bunny ears first. I like that. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> all right. Now, by now, I don't know, you know, hopefully these will sell. I'm not in a hurry. I got three watchers on this one as well. But each of these were brought to me by the same uh, the same local person, and I had never listed them before. So I thought it was really fun to research them, and she was blown out of the water because I came up with these prices, which, of course, we hope they sell for. But if they don't, it's not the end of the world. This one only has one watcher. So I learned that the 
this type of mold didn't sell for as much as the others. So I started this one at 225 with Make It Offer. And again, that one was really hard. This one with the row of them was really hard to identify for me because you couldn't, there were so many things that were coming up. I'll show you. So if you put rabbit mold row, say only one had the word row. So, okay, what do we try now? We try bunny. So you kind of just have to keep playing with the words. Now here's a row on a metal sheet, only $25.99 they were asking. I found it really hard. Now here's two bunnies, a double bunny mold for $41. So then you just have to go back and then now take out the word row. Let's try three um, bunnies. Let's take out bunny. But I found it very challenging because I kept coming up with all these plastic ones. Now here's, these are a little different. They were asking 150, didn't get it. 120, that one sold for, but it can't see the picture anymore. Here's a flat one with hinges. There's mine. Wow, that, I couldn't find that earlier. That's so funny. That looks just like mine. Let me go look. They were asking $94. Oh, it's been relisted. Let's click on that. Relist. That looks a lot like mine. Mine are, um, huh, go look at mine now. <laughs> I couldn't find that earlier. Now, mine has a weird little couple lines on the back, so I don't, know what that means. It's probably to connect to a rack or something. Theirs doesn't have that. No. So theirs is a little bit different. So I don't know. Mine may not sell for the amount that I'm asking, but I'm going to give it a try. And then if somebody makes an offer, then I can make a consideration on it. I My goal was hoping that, um, now this one's different. This one has two looking one way, one looking the other way. And then finding this on here and here, I did, I think I put three bunnies. Oops. Search. Yeah. Yep, I remember I had a hard time with this one. It was really challenging trying to get um, one just like it, but it's funny we found one now on here. But it's okay, you know, if you price things a little high and then you have make an offer and then take it out for a spin. A couple days can go by. I had this listed on the 20th. So I can wait and see how it goes. I can drop the price. And here's another angle that I did was I listed it in two categories. So I also listed it under um, antiques and I listed it under molds. So there, another thing that I did on um, this one, let's see, I listed it under Thanksgiving, under vintage, and then I believe that there was, um, well, there's a Thanksgiving category. So I put it under there and I put it under molds. So in my, my idea was to try to add second category. Now this one I didn't. This one I only had in cast iron. I didn't even put this on under molds. I put, well, it is cast iron. And it's had 74 views. It's got two watchers. So I just kind of played with um, the idea of adding a second category to help increase the odds because that's the bottom line. You want to increase the odds 
to get a sale. And adding a second category on many of these, let's see if I did that on here. Nope. These I didn't see the need to because these looked like they were going to be a sure thing. And then the other ones I think I added second category. I think, was it on this one? Yep, this one I also added under Easter Vintage Bunny Rabbits and then also under Mold. So I added a second category on there. So that's how that works. So thanks to um, the ability to be able to search for these kind of items through my worth point, I was able to narrow it down, and I just wanted to share that with you. Um, the first time that worth point really helped me was trying to identify, I had a lady bring me a ton of glassware that I had absolutely no clue. I could not sort it out. <laughs> I am not a, a glassware person, but I was able to come in here and, for example, I put in heart-shaped face glass. I, I don't even know if I use the word shaped. Sorry, I can't spell. Heart-shaped glass vase. Search. And let's see if it'll come up today. And I sat here with my vase trying to figure out, maybe I added the word crystal. Let me put that in. I think my internet's acting wacky because there's, because the images aren't showing up. Anyways, bottom line, I came in here and I just started scrolling the photos for heart-shaped vase when suddenly I was able to find it and I couldn't believe it. I was so happy because then I was able to give my heart-shaped vase a name and I really had no clue. I don't know why we're not finding it right now. Um, it's probably one of these images that are not showing up. I think that my internet is acting stupid. Yeah. Let's do title. Um, see, now we're getting closer. Now this one, that was not it. Now my face was shaped like this, but it wasn't, it wasn't bed, it didn't have the lines on both sides. One side did not have a line. So, of course I can't find it right now. I swear that's what I put in. <laughs> Heart shaped. Let me try taking out vase. I'm sure I put in vase. Sorry, I can't remember what it put. Oh my gosh, I think I just saw it. I can't remember what I put in now. No, mine wasn't Gorham. It was, I can't remember the name of it right now, but the bottom line is I was able to come in here and identify this vase, and I was so happy about that. So you can look at a piece of glass, for example. So I like say we're going to put glass compote um, on metal base. And then you can kind of go through the graphics and narrow it down to finding your item. And then the great thing about it is say, okay, gosh, this is my item. And then you can pull it up. And then now I can use some of the words if I want to. I can copy and paste some of these words and look for some things that I didn't think of to add to my title, like Irish urns. I wouldn't think of that. So there's just different things that you learn that help you with your listings. So that's it in a nutshell, how I use WorthPoint and how it helps me with my um, listings and trying to identify things and try to get the best prices that I can for my items. If you have any questions, at, oh, here we go. Here's a question. Do you ever sell large items like a Trendle sewing machine? And if so, how do you handle shipping? Okay, sure. 
I sell large items all the time. And when I list them, I'll just show you one for example. When I list them on eBay, I will say, um, let's see, I think I have, well, I have, um, let's see, what do I have? Chair. Let me just put it in chair. Here we go. I have a whole dining room set listed. This is a mahogany dining table with eight chairs. And when I list items like this, I choose freight shipping. So that's all. You choose freight. And when you choose freight, then people can't, um, then there's no price shared. So you have to um, work out the details with the buyer. And so by choosing freight. Also, when you choose freight, you're not um, stuck with that um, one day shipping or your um, you're protected from your handling time and all that and your listing for um, scores. Now, what I do is I put this little note in here. Buyer makes arrangement for shipping. Shipping worldwide, I do prefer using U-Ship, Rody, or Craters and Freighters. Local pickup is always welcome. Feel free to contact a shipper direct or I can contact a company after purchase. Buyer is responsible for all shipping and handling costs. So I, I choose freight and then I put this note in here and I've not had any problem. I've sold couches, um, tractors, I sold all kinds of things and never had a problem with it. So sometimes people will, um, they'll just come and pick it up or they'll send a shipper or They'll tell me where they're at, and then I will put an ad up on U-Ship. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's called U-Ship, U-Ship.com. So after the, after the purchase, and I know exactly where the person lives, and I have their information, I just tell them, you know, to go ahead and check out, and then I'll bill you separately for shipping. That's one option. Or you can tell them not to check out and to give you time to add the shipping costs. And all you do is you come in here, you can get a free estimate, you put in um, where, where your item is going, and you choose what it is, if it's um, household items, if it's um, furniture, antiques, pianos, give you an idea on what size your item is, and then you can say, yes, it can be found at eBay. And then you would put in your eBay item number, and it'll actually import it. So let me go find my item number. Copy. Paste. Import. So now it should bring that in if my computer's going to cooperate. And then the person would be able to see, there it is, it brought in the title, it brought in the photo, and then I can add any additional information that's needed. Of course, I'm not going to follow through with this yet because I'm not ready, I haven't sold it yet. But I would put in the, the information as needed, and then I would continue. And then what happens is, let me see if there are any on the site. Um, here we go. What happens is people would um, make it, make a bid. And anytime I put something in there, I get offers right away. And it works really good. And then people come in and say, well, I can ship that. I can bring that for you for X amount of dollars. And then whatever they um, price, I'll agree to then we cut a deal and then I go and bill the person. It's pretty easy. Hope that helped. Um, when selling for others, what percentage do you charge them? Does it depend on how much research? Nope, I charge a flat fee. Whatever the item sells for under $1,000 is 50-50. And then all of the eBay and PayPal fees come out of my 50%. 
So if you go to um, my website and then just hold your cursor over products and services, go to consignment, and then you can scroll down and let me just, it, there's my breakdown of my fees on consignment. Anything over um, 5,000 is 15%. And then you can also, where is it? There it is. You're, you just click on this if you want to look at my consignment contract. So you can just download that. It's free. And then just put your information in and you can get a free copy of my contract. And anybody else who's been thinking about consignment can just copy it. I don't care. Just make it your own. Just take my logo off and my name and just make it your own. So hope that helps. Um, let's see. What are there toy collectibles on Worth Point, or are they limited to older antiques like glass? Up? Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Yes, glass is not the only only. It's my issue <laughs> with with search, so that's why it came up on my mind to show it to you the most. But no, I, you can also look up toys. In fact, I have some toys in the garage. I have. Well, here we go. I have a local man brought me the first. Um, what did he say it was? Matchbox car. And I haven't even listed it yet or started on it yet because I've got another client in front of him. Actually, i got two clients in front of him. I'm kind of backed up right now. But he told me, uh, let's just try it. Let's, let's look it up. So we've got Matchbox. And I don't know. See what happens if I put the number one. I know it's the first edition of Matchbox Car, and I don't know what the date is on it. I haven't started researching it yet. So here we go. Um, wow. Look at that. In the UK. This also brings up um, other countries. So, and then you can also check mark. See, I've got all, I forgot to point that out, Barbara, off to the left. I can only search eBay or I can do other sources or show all. And I actually just do show all. Um, all right, so there's Johnny Lightning. Look at that. Crazy prices here. Now, yeah, I don't even know what some of these names are. Here's a Matchbox Lesney Dodge Wrecker. <laughs> it's sold for $8,000. Oh, my goodness gracious. Now, it looks like people have been selling a lot of box lots. And if there's a toy you want me to look up, go ahead and type it in. Or whatever you'd like me to look up, I'll do it while we're here. Um, do you start with a firm price on shipping as opposed to an estimate reference you ship? No, I don't start with any price on shipping. So I just put in there, like I said, um, I'll choose freight, and then I'll. I it doesn't show a shipping price, and because they could live, I live in Florida. They could be at nine hundred two one zero, which is California. So for me, if I do need to test something or get an idea before I list, I will put uh, the nine hundred two one zero zip code in. Um, like craters and freighters or in um, UPS if I need to take a look at what they would charge to get an idea. But when you choose, when you choose, or if you choose calculated shipping, of course, then it'll automatically be figured in if you, if you know the weight and the measurements. However, I just choose freight, and then I put those words in there. And, yes, when they give you a price, it is firm, yes. So they give you a price and it's locked in. So then you could add 50 bucks, 25 bucks or whatever for um, handling fee or whatever you want. You can add that on and then um, you would just invoice your, your customer. How old does the item have to be listed on WorthPoint? Do they have newer collection, collectibles? I have found some newer collectibles on there. Um, it just depends on, WorthPoint's only going to pull in the categories, like here we go. Here's advertising, toys, dolls, games, puzzles. There's all different categories on here. Like they don't pull in um, Apple iPads. They're not going to pull in that category or um, iPhones, things like that. That category wouldn't be pulled in. 
but we could search. I don't know what's what's going on in the Beanie Baby world. I haven't looked lately. Have you guys looked at Beanie Babies lately? Beanie Babies helped me buy a house. Oh my gosh, look at that. Princess Diana. Oh, the picture's not there. That's insane. That was in 2011. Um, wow, I got to get out the Dianas. <laughs> I got to go look through my kid's bag of beans. I have not been in touch with Beanie Babies lately. Um, let's see. Barbara's got, and they give you a price. Yes. Do you prefer you ship to Rody? Um, no, I actually prefer Rody. I like, I like Rody better because when I put the gig in there and I put the price or I put the item in there, then it's just, I don't know. I just like using Rody better, but I like to also take a look at the best price for my clients. So like I had a roll top desk, for example. I put it on Rody and they wanted 400 and whatever, $420 to ship it from Ocala, Florida to Bailey, Colorado. And then I put it on, so I didn't answer them, which I thought was a bit high, but I didn't answer them. And then I put it on um, UShip and then somebody offered 225 So, of course, I went with UShip. And the great thing was there I didn't have to wait long. I had um, people contact right away about shipping it. So um, okay, let's see if I can copy that. Gosh, it won't let me copy that URL, Barbara. Oh wait, maybe it will down here. Let me try. Here we go. Let me see what Barbara's got. Ah, vintage small Disney Mickey Mouse six inch plus bow tie stock. Okay. Now there's something about Mickey's nose, isn't there, on the older ones? Huh. All right, let's look. Let's put in Mickey Mouse six inch. Let's just try that first. You don't want to put too many words. Oh, the stock number. Gotcha. Um, Hurdy Gurdy. Huh. Never seen that one. Yeah, see that you can always tell the Mickey's when they're older because his nose points up versus the the more modern Mickey. There's a Pez. Look at that. 3,000. Cha-chang. <laughs> uh, all right, we're getting too many. Let me go ahead and add the word plush then. Oh, is that yours, Barbara? Let me go back. Now, yours has a bow tie. The Stife went for $5.65. This one went for 555 in 2013, but it looks like he's got a button or something on his nose, or I mean on his front. And he's wearing clothes. Oh, and he stands up. Yep. Yours looks more like a baby, like a, one of the Disney babies to me. Um. Yep, so what you would have to do is sit here and keep narrowing it down 
till you can identify, oh, look, here's one with the bow tie. But, oh, he's got his hand up. And he's got the white gloves. Yeah, see, yours is more. To me, this looks like a baby. Huh. Well, let's try the stock number then. No, it's not him. Oh, there he is. Sold for $19.22 in eBay UK 2014. Now, that one has a different bow than yours, but it looks a lot like, well, he's got a seam down the middle and doesn't have the right nose. Yeah, so it really takes some time for you to narrow it down, and you have to keep kind of playing with the keywords and trying different things to sort it out. This one looks a little bit more like it. But again, it doesn't have a tie. Huh. It looks a lot like yours, though. Yep. Yours is a little more faded, I think, than this one. But they got $14.99 for the two of them. So, and they had gold hang tides, tags. So, yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a big money one. I think that, um, yeah, so you still have make an offer on it. And then you could just kind of start dropping prices and see what happens. Oh, good girl, Feeding America. I love that. Um, good listing. Very good. So, yeah, just kind of play with it, and if it doesn't sell, drop the price. I don't think you have any followers yet, so just keep hustling on it and see what happens. <laughs> All right, where was I? Oh, my gosh, there's so many questions in here. Um would like to receive, oh, you will receive the recording. Okay, wait, I'm starting at the bottom. <laughs> another topic for another time. Have you heard of the Hidden Mickey plush? I did. I did. I have heard of it. It's pretty cool. Um, it's something about the hands, isn't it? The On the paws? I can't remember offhand, but someone showed me that the not long ago. When you ship large items, do you wrap or pack, and do you add a handling fee to Rody you ships fee? I do. I do add a fee to it because I can. <laughs> so, I do. And no, when you're using you ship, generally they just and Rody, you don't. They'll just come and get it. But if it's um, like I have, I have people that send me stuff on consignment that use Rody. So. The last batch I got actually was from Tampa. It wasn't too too awful far, but they used Rody to bring all the stuff to me. And then I had a lady in Macon, Georgia, that loaded up um, a a lady's van on using Rody, and she did have everything packaged. So things like that, you know, when you're sending a lot of different things, then yeah, you probably want to package it up. So, oh my gosh. Okay, are Star Wars collectibles listed on WorthPoint? Do you prefer checking out prices on WorthPoint or using the history of a sale or a combination of both? Definitely a combination of both. So I will go to, um, all right, let's just look up. Um, Princess Leia.
I have a large Princess Leia Barbie. Ooh, could be time to sell. <laughs> um, 3,000. Oh my God, that was just in March. Jesus, I'm going to have to go dig that up. Um, my son gave it to me when he was little as a Mother's Day gift because I used to love Star Wars. And um, I sold everything except all my Princess Leia's. Looks like I better sell them now. <laughs> so, yeah, you can look up the Star Wars on here. As you can see, they, there's all different prices, different styles. Um, and then you kind of just narrow it down. Jeez, this one sold for 500 or 560 January 2017. And, yeah, it's unfortunate, but when people die, their the value goes up on their toys and their memorabilia. It's just the way it is. So, yeah, you can definitely look up all of these kinds of things. All right, so where did all the questions go? I've lost them. Okay, great. I hope that helps, Jill. You can definitely look up um, the Star Wars. Who handles the insurance on the freight shipments? Good question. So on um, Rody, you can pay extra for insurance, and that's generally what I do. Um, I actually sold a $6,000 item on eBay, and it was going to Tampa. I was going to drive it myself, but I didn't want, I was too lazy. So I put it on roadie because I did not want to put it in the mail. And it was actually $6,100. So I just put it up on roadie and then um, let someone come and pick it up. And I was able to insure it for $6,100. And I think it cost me I want to say $90 to ship it, which I didn't care because I was making a huge profit. So, and I was safe, you know, I felt better. And then I was in constant contact with uh, the buyer. I even gave him a call and said, yeah, I just, I see that you, your item was delivered. Um, you know, do you have any questions? And can you leave me feedback? So, because <laughs> uh, when I sell a, a large item like that on consignment, the quicker I get feedback and then I know everything's good to go, then I can release the funds and get them paid. All right, so I hope that helps. All right, looks like I've got all the questions except for um, Barbara's really long list there on <laughs> Disney's. I don't know what, uh, what all that is, Barbara. You may have to send me an email because I honestly don't know what why why that list is so long um all right so it looks like i got to everybody's questions let's see how can i delete them all right so thank you so much everybody for joining me gosh it was just amazing having such a a, a large amount of people the limit on uh this service is, is 100 and i met the limit and then people just started um asking for replays so it's all good. I hope that everybody enjoyed it. If you have any other questions, as I was starting to say, you can go right to my um, website at powersellingmom.com. You can go to the contact page is one way to contact me and then just fill out the information on your question. Or you can click on book now. And when you click on that, you can, I have the eBay help desk. You can, uh, or if you have a question about consignment selling, um, if you need assistance or you want me to do an assessment for you on your eBay store, that's $300, but you would just click on to do that, and then we'll jump on a phone call. Otherwise, if you have a quick question, just book a call with me. And it's real easy. You just click on to the eBay help desk, and then it'll show you the times that I'm available. Like today, all I have left is 4.15 and 4.20 before I end the day. Or, and I'm out of town the next few days doing workshops. But I am taking calls on weekends. So you would just click it and then pick out which time is good for you. They match my Google Calendar, and it's real easy to do. So, 
All right, so again, just go to Power Selling Mom. You can go all the way to the bottom of the page, click on Book Now, and we can get started. And that's that. All right, I think I got everybody's questions. One last look. Uh, will I be at eBay Open? I really don't know. Um, at this point, I'll say no, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, what percentage do you sell on consignment? Well, a good percentage of my business, like if you look through my eBay store right now, all of the high-end items are consignment. And then all the little items are mine. <laughs> so that'll give you an idea. So I try to I try to list my own stuff here and there, but um, you know, when things are slow, but I mostly do have consignment items, but it does vary. It's um oh gosh, I don't I don't know how many items I have listed right now. Well it'll show you. Yep. So I have 232 items listed. So like all the Harley Davidson items that are new, I actually picked up at a local shop and because they were I hit the clearance rack. And then I also have some Harley Davidson items that were brought to me by a local lady. Like see here's a $375 jacket and chaps. And then there's, you know, different things. There's um if you guys like Harley items, I got some really cool stuff. But yeah, so any high-end item is pretty much consignment. They're not mine. Hope that helps. All right, that's all the questions. Thank you so much for joining me. You can find me on eBay at Dana, my name, it's real easy, D-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, or my eBay store is Ask Dana, and at powersellingmom.com. All right, everybody. I'm going to send you a follow-up email with the information about WorthPoint, and then I'll give you the code for a free trial. And then also, um, if you do want to join WorthPoint, you can take a look at um, their options. I don't know them offhand. Let me see if I can find them for you. Um, gosh. Because I'm logged in, I guess it's not showing me. I pay for the year in advance. Gosh, I can't find it now. <laughs> Sorry. I can't believe it. Oh, actually, there's all the categories for you. For those that were asking me. Um, all right, but in my follow-up email, I'll send you all the information, and then you can um, take a look at it. Wait, was that it? No, that's just mine. All right, I'll send it to you in my follow-up email. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. Until next time, happy eBay selling. Bye.